This 32 Roaster with a 56 Buick engine in it was built by Bill DeCar. He rolled and molded a 40 dashboard in it with French tunnel instruments. I painted it candy gold over a rich gold powder base. This 50 Ford belonged to a kid from Montebello. It was metallic blue. I scalloped it in silver metallic with candy blue tips. Then I pinstriped it in imitation gold. I believe Gil Ayala did the body and paintwork on it. These shots were featured in Custom Cars Annual of 59. It was also featured in Rod and Custom April of 58 on an article called Low Down on Loring. Photos by Jim Potter. This was Pat Patterson's 49 Ford with the 55 Chrysler taillights, a Bellflower High student. Ed Shellhouse from Ed's Custom Auto Body in Bellflower did the bodywork. George Newton painted it. Featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 58. Also featured in Motor Life March of 58 and Rod and Custom April of 58. Photos by Jim Potter. This was Hayward Mendenhall's 56 Ford pickup from Norwalk. I scalloped it in gold metallic with candy root beer tips and pinstriped them in white. This is the only photo I have of it. I found it in the Renegade's 1958 Rod and Custom Motorama program. This was Jake Boltzmann's 51 Chevy hardtop from Bellflower. I scalloped it in silver metallic with candy root beer tips and pinstriped them in imitation gold. I did it in our driveway in 56. It was featured here in Car Speed and Style, June of 58. In 57, Jake brought it into my North Long Beach shop to have me add some more pinstriping to it. As you can see here, I'm pinstriping on the outside of the scallops in white. As you can see here, I did the pinstriping in black on the inside of the scallops. All the photographs were taken by Jim Potter. This 54 Chevy belonged to Bob Shrimp from Norwalk. I scalloped it in a teal blue with white tips and pinstriped them in imitation gold. It was featured here in the Custom Cars Annual of 58. I painted a couple of eyeballs sword fighting each other on his dash and added some dark blue pinstriping. Also featured in Car Craft, November of 57. And Motor Life, March of 59. I remember in 56 when Bob pulled his Chevy into our driveway with a bunch of runs on his hood and trunk. He knew pinstriping wouldn't hide them, and he didn't like flames. I told Bob I'll cover them with scallops. Bob said, what are scallops? Well, his Chevy was my first scallop job. After Bob showed it off at the clock drive-in, it seemed like every day after high school I had a scallop job to do. I told Bob I wouldn't pinstripe his scallops unless he would reverse his front bumper.
All the photographs were taken by Jim Potter. This 32 coupe belonged to George and Dick Collins from Whittier. They also had a shop doing tuck and roll upholstery. I flamed their coupe in a light candy turquoise with dark blue tips and pinstriped them in black. I used their white pearl for my underbase. Featured here in Rodden Custom March of 58 by Jim Potter. George and Dick were also members of the Renegades Car Club from Long Beach. Here's George with the coupe after I flamed it. Featured in Carcraft February of 59 as one of the members representing Car Club of the Year article. This was Kermit Hansen's 57 Buick, also one of my classmates at Bellflower High School. I did the flames in gold metallic and tipped in red. I pinstriped them in white. Here his Buick was featured on the cover of Carcraft, November of 57. Also featured in Rodden Custom, October of 57. Photos by George Barris. And Motor Life, November of 57. George Barris did the article on customizing the current style. I want to thank Greg Sharp for these color photographs. Kermit used to pick me up on Friday nights and we'd cruise Balboa Bay and then Merle's Drive-In in Corona Del Mar. The photos were taken by Jim Potter. I named his Buick the Snatch Wagon with a triple X rated cartoon. A week later the CHP made him remove it. This 56 Chevy belonged to Johnny Drew from North Long Beach. These colored photos were featured in the Grease Machines book, April of 79. His Chevy was painted lime fire metallic in nitro lacquer. I did the flames in candy green with candy root beer tips over a silver base and pinstriped them in black. Those were the four colors that made the lime fire metallic. This group shot was also used in this book. All the photos were taken by Jim Potter. This 32 coupe belonged to Clyde Hamilton from Bellflower, another classmate of mine. In 55, I pinstriped it in white during my junior year. Clyde wound up in jail for too many racing and speeding tickets. Two weeks before Clyde got out of jail, his mom sold his coupe to Jim Notaboom. Jim took the coupe to Bill DeCar to have it chopped and shaved. Jim lived next door to Bill's body shop with his parents then. Featured in Carcraft, May of 64. In the early 60s, after Bill finished the bodywork, Jim brought it over to my Paramount shop on Lakewood Boulevard. 
I painted his coupe candy lemon over white pearl. I did the flames in candy lime with candy green tips and pinstriped them in black. As you can see here, it made the cover of popular hot rodding. Jim's coupe also made the cover of car crap, August of 64. Jim also worked for me back in the 50s. This chop 51 Chevy four-door belonged to Vince Uloa from LA. The body and paintwork was done by Kenny's Garage in LA. Featured here in Car Craft April of 55 by Dick Day, you can see the 51 Merc grill shell with a shortened 53 Dodge grill. The taillights were dropped 4 inches in French and Gaylord did the upholstery. It was also featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56, photos by Jim Potter. What I liked about Vince's custom was his second version when he had his taillights changed. They were the deepest tunneled taillights that I've ever seen. They were formed inside a shroud taken from a Studebaker. Also featured in Rodden Custom, August of 58. This 50 Ford belonged to Hirsch Conway from Linwood. He named it the Teardrop. The Barris Brothers did the custom body and paintwork on it. It was first featured in Restyle Your Car of 56. As you can see here, it made the cover of Custom Cars, November of 57. I first met Hirsch in 55 when he and Dick Jackson were prepping cars for the Barris Brothers. We both entered our customs together at all the local car shows throughout Southern California in 56 and 57. His teardrop also made the cover of Motor Life, January 58, with George Barris doing an article on color chroming hubcaps. After George left Linwood to relocate uptown to North Hollywood, Hirsch opened his first shop up nearby in Linwood and called it Junior's House of Color. Junior was one of the greatest painters back then and still is today. This was featured in Grease Machines, April of 79. This photo was taken by Andy Southard in 58 when he drove in from New York to meet all of us. Andy was a top pinstriper and scalloper from the East Coast. This was his 58 Impala and we were all impressed with his quality of work. As you can see here, I'm with one of my slaves, Eddie Rhodes, checking out Andy's great scallop job. This photo shows Andy on the right posing alongside Junior's custom. Junior's custom was featured in several other magazines which I don't have in my collection. This was Harry Okuda's 57 Dodge from Norwalk. I did the scallops in metallic gold tipped in white and pinstriped them in black. I also color chromed his hubcaps in a candy fuchsia.
As you can see here, it made the cover of Motor Trend, February of 58. It was featured here in Rodden Custom, October of 57. Also featured here in Motor Life, December of 57. And Car Craft, November of 57. These color photographs were featured in the Grease Machines book, April of 79. As you can see, I added more scallops on his hood. Here's a shot of me and Harry alongside of his Dodge in front of Bellflower High. All the photographs of Harry's car were taken by Jim Potter. This Chop 49 Ford belonged to Jay Johnston from Compton. Jay and his buddy Bill Bowman did all the custom body work on it. In fact, they built it from a total. Jay did the custom paint job in nitro lacquer. It made the cover of Carcraft January of 55. Jay was not only a great metal man, but he was a damn good painter. It was featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 55. Also featured here in Car Craft, May of 55. And Motor Trend, September of 55. It was also featured on the back covers of Custom Cars, January of 58. This is the only photo I have of Jay. Jay had a shop in Compton on the corner of Alondra and Santa Fe called Stylecraft. This was John Busman's 56 Chevy from Artesia. Van Leeuwen's custom shop in Artesia did the body and paint work. I flamed it with a combo of scallops in lavender metallic tipped in white and pinstriped them in imitation gold. It made the cover of Car Craft, November of 57. It was also featured inside for the Crazy Painting article. And featured here in Car Speed and Style, June of 58. Also featured inside on the article called Scalloping, the newest craze in custom painting by Jim Potter. Jim Potter used the name of James Richards for the East Coast magazines. Now I don't remember all the names here, but the tall guy to the left is Jake Boltzma with the 51 Chevy. The blonde guy looking down at me is Steve the Dutchman. In the foreground is Gerald Twomley. Next to him is Lowell Helms with the Pepsi bottles. With my girlfriend Elaine Sterling, Jim Notoboom, and Buzzy leaning over the hood watching me do my thing with my Jim Dandy sweatshirt. 
This was featured in Popular Customs, the winter issue of 64. In 59, I repainted Buzzy Chevy in a candy grape over lavender metallic base and using the base color for the panel scallops and flames with white pearl tips. And I also pinstriped them in imitation gold. This photo was taken by Jim Potter just before I repainted it candy grape. This 49 chop Carson Top Merc belonged to Larry Lorenzen. He was from North Long Beach. Twenty-two years later, it made the cover of the Grease Machines book, April of 79. Larry used to work for me at my North Long Beach shop, along with Gary McNaught and Jim Notabone. I nicknamed Larry Lorenzo. Lorenzo didn't mind working late hours with me. After we'd close his shop, we'd hop in his badass Merc and cruise the rest of the night away. Boy, did we have some great times in his Merc. Here's Lorenzo with his Dean Jeffries Flame Merc. This was also featured in the Grease Machines book. Photos by Jim Potter. This custom 53 Ford Coupe belonged to Roger Miller from Bellflower. Ed Shellhouse from Bellflower did all the custom bodywork and his painter George Newton painted it light teal blue in nitro lacquer. Then I pinstriped it in navy blue. Featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56. And featured here in Car Craft. November of 56. And car craft again, March of 58. And featured here in Custom Cars, July of 58. The photos were taken by George Barris. And Motor Life, July of 58. Notice the perforated mesh surrounding his 55 DeSoto taillights and exhaust pipe. And it was also used in his grill. Some of these photos were taken by Jim Potter. This flaming 50 Ford belonged to Low Helms from Bellflower. Ed Shellhouse did all the bodywork on it. I flamed it in metallic gold, tipped in white, and pinstriped them in black. It made the cover of Custom Cars, December of 57. These shots were taken up at Las Feliz, Hollywood Hills. And featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 58.
This side shot was featured on the back side of the front cover. Featured here in Custom Cars, February of 58. Lowell was another classmate of mine at Bellflower High. He was taken up photography, and I made him my personal photographer. Wait until you see the photos he captured of all the Bellflower Customs in 56, 7, and 8. They will be featured in my upcoming book, Volume 1, of all the weird and crazy paint schemes I created in the 50s. I nicknamed Lowell Brush Brows because of his long, thick, bushy eyebrows. I told him I wanted to cut them off to make my own sword striping brushes. Jim Potter took most of these photographs. This was Danny Pruinton's 56 Merc from Long Beach. Ed Shellhouse did the custom bodywork, and his painter George Newton painted it in a Bahama blue metallic nitro lacquer, and I pinstriped it in imitation gold. This shot was featured in Restyle Your Car of 56. It was taken at Excelsior High School in Norwalk. The Coachman's Car Club of Norwalk sponsored this car show in 56. The guy on the left with a mic is Keith Christensen the president of the club announcing the awards. At 17, my first car show, Ed Shellhouse had me stay up all night long pinstriping three of his award-winning customs for the show. I cruised over to the car show with St. Vasquez and his full custom 50 Chevy. Gary McNaught told me there were only 22 pinstriping jobs in the show. Von Dutch had four, Dean Jeffries had seven, and I had 11. This was featured in Custom Cars, September of 58. And featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 60. Danny was a member of the Creators of Lakewood Car Club. This color photo was taken in 57 at the Compton Car Show in the parking lot at Compton College by Lowell Helms. Here's a close-up of Danny receiving his first place trophy for semi-custom. Most of these photos were taken by Jim Potter. This 55 Studebaker belonged to Dick Gonzalez from Long Beach. It was first featured in Restyle Your Car of 56 when it was black and gold. Here it is in Rod and Custom, November of 58 with a black bottom and gold top. Also featured in Custom Cars Annual of 58 Dick had it repainted Rose Miss Metallic, which we use this version for the poster. Dick was the president of the Cutouts Car Club of Long Beach. As you can see here, it made the cover of Rodden Custom, December of 59, after I painted it. I painted it in a candy lemon over white pearl, and using the white pearl base for the panels, then I pinstriped it in black.
Art's Custom Shop did all the body work. The only shop that I know of that name was in a small town called Hollydale, bordering Paramount. Featured here in Custom Cars, November of 59. It was also featured in Hot Rod, July of 89, by Greg Sharp. All the photos with the Candy Lemon version were taken by Jim Potter, including this shot of me laying the black stripe between the two colors. This was Sandy Kroll's 53 Chevy hardtop from Lakewood. It was featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 57. Ed Shell House and Frank Sasagati from Bellflower did the bodywork, and George Newton painted it burgundy metallic in nitro lacquer and tune toned it with ivory white. And featured here in Custom Cars January of 58. Dean Jeffries did the pinstriping, and he put the name The Sandman on his quarter panels. This 40 Ford pickup belonged to Clyde Castleberry from Norwalk. I did the scallops in candy purple over a white pearl base and pinstriped them in white. Photos by Years Truly. This was my 50 Chevy the first time we customized it. Ed Shellhouse did the bodywork for me, and George Newton painted it rose mist metallic and synthetic enamel. He painted below the chrome strips in an ivory white lacquer. I remember installing these 51 Buick taillights while Ed was doing the lead work on my quarter panels. They used this photo for a taillight article in Custom Cars, November of 57. They featured this shot for an article called Lower Your Car the Right Way in Hot Rod, September of 57. They used my heart-shaped tuck-and-roll upholstery for an interior and rug article in Carcraft, May of 58. Thirty-four years later, they featured this shot in Carcraft, May of 90, to represent the 50s. I named my car at that time, The Heartless. This flame 55 Chevy hardtop belonged to Al Lazarus from Downey. It was featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 58. The only expense to my radical flame jobs back then 
was the masking tape. Featured here in Motor Trend, February of 58, on an article called Splash Your Car With Color, Jim Potter shot this photo from the roof of my 57 shop in North Long Beach. I did the flames in an olive mist green metallic tipped in silver metallic and pinstriped them in imitation gold. We called it the seaweed wagon. This shot was taken in 58 at Excelsior High School in Norwalk and sponsored by the Norwalk Coachman Car Club. Al was always receiving first place trophies in mild customs this photo. The rest of the photos were taken by Jim Potter. This was Ray Moore's 52 Vicky from Lakewood. Van Leeuwen's custom shop from Artesia did the body and paint on his first version shown here. Featured here in Carcraft May of 55 on an article called Grab Bag featuring grills. This article on Ray's Custom was featured in Carcraft, August of 55. Featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 57. And featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56. It made the cover of Carcraft March of 57 with Ray's second version. Ed Shellhouse did the extra body work by molding his grill shell in and adding 55 Chevy headlights along with 55 Lincoln taillights. George Newton painted it in a deep orchid metallic nitro lacquer and two-toned it in ivory white. Then I pinstriped it in white. These photos were taken by Lowell Helms in 56 at Bellflower High. I painted the orchids on the top and his glove box. Ray also had orchids embedded inside of his plastic knobs. Pacific Custom from Bellflower did the tuck and roll. In Motor Life, July of 58, they featured both versions. Dean Jeffries pinstriped it in 55 on the left, and I pinstriped the second version on the right in 56. After I did the scallop job in 57 at my North Long Beach shop, they featured it here in Motor Trend, February of 58. and Custom Rotter, April of 58. It was also featured here in the Grease Machines book, April of 79. Here's the third version of Ray's Vicky. This was in front of my 58 shop on the corner of Bellflower Boulevard and Palm. I painted it candy wine over a Roman gold base using the gold for the panel scallops and pinstriped them in white. This photo was taken by Lowell Helms.
Featured here in CarCraft February of 59 for Car Club of the Year. I added more panels to it, with Candy Root Beer fading into a platinum pearl. All the photos of Ray's Vicky with the scallop version were taken by Jim Potter. This 56 Chevy four-door hardtop belonged to Jim Jackson from Compton. Ben's welding shop in Bellflower did all the bodywork. I did the scallops in metallic gold tipped in candy root beer and then pinstriped them in white. It also made the cover of Motor Trend, February of 58. I also flamed behind his louvers. It was featured here in CarCraft, November of 57, for an article called Crazy Painting, with Jim and I posing behind his Chevy. It was also featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 59, and featured here in Car Speed and Style, April of 58. They used this shot on the back side of the front cover of Custom Cars Annual 59, showing my artwork. I painted this monstrous alien from Mars chasing his first naked Earth Lady. I named his four-door custom the Scarfer. Jim was a member of the Rogues Car Club from L.A. Here's Jim posing in front of his Chevy at Bellflower High. All these photographs were taken by Jim Potter. This was A.G. Wynn's 56 Merc from Downey. It was originally built in Oxnard by Ted Tonic. I remember A.G. cruising in it on Bellflower Boulevard when it was two-tone blue. It was featured here in CarCraft, October of 64. AG took it to build a car to have him do some more custom work on it. Then I painted it candy orange over a bright white pearl base and two-toned it with gold metal flake. Ed Shellhouse sold his property on Artesia Boulevard in Bellflower to build a car in 59. And it became Bill's Body Shop for many years. Photos by yours truly. This 54 full custom Merc belonged to Bobby Yamasaki. Junior told me George Barris nicknamed Bobby Chimbo. Featured here in Rod and Custom, March of 58, Chimbo's Merc was one of the customs that burned down in the Barris Brothers shop, December 7th of 57. Jay Johnston from Compton did the bodywork on the front end with the candid headlights and 57 Olds front bumper with the 57 Etzel grill pieces. It was brought over to the bearer shop to have the top chop and install 56 Buick taillights. Then Jay Johnson painted it in a pearl green. It was ready for delivery and Chimba was going to pick it up the next day. I cut class the next day and drove over to see the remains. 
Chimble's murk looked like it had leaded icicles hanging all around it. This was Jay Johnson on the left and Curly, one of Barris's body men, looking at the remains also. This was Ron Guidry's full custom 36 Ford Coupe from Long Beach. Ron's Coupe was another custom that burned down in the Barris fire. Ron and his coupe were featured here in Hot Rod, February of 57. Ron was also a member of the Renegades Car Club from Long Beach. Ron and his coupe were featured here in Car Craft, February of 59, as one of the members for the Car Club of the Year. Art Summers did the pinstriping on the exterior from Santa Monica, and Dean Jeffries did this hairy eyeball creature on the firewall, and named it the Renegade. This 50 Chevy convertible belonged to Butch Beisman from Bellflower. Butch was also another high school classmate of mine. It was featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56. Ed Shellhouse did the custom bodywork and George Newton painted it in Shoreline Bay synthetic enamel. Also featured here in Carcraft July of 57 for an article on grills. The photos were taken by Jim Potter. This was Jim Doss's 56 Chevy hardtop from Bakersfield. It was featured on the cover of the Sweden magazine, April of 60. I did the flames in yellow with lime green faded into blue tips and pinstriped them in white. It was also featured here in the Grease Machines book, April of 79. From left to right, Ray Moore, Harry Okuda, Jack James, yours truly, Gary McNaught, and Jim Jackson. The photos were taken by Jim Potter. This 54 Chevy Post belonged to Gerald Twomley from Artesia. Branson's custom shop in Artesia did the body and paint. It was featured here in Custom Cars, October of 58, by George Barris. And featured here in Custom Show Cars of 59. And featured here in Car Speed and Style, May of 59. Article and photos by Jim Potter. And featured here in Custom Illustrated, May of 63. I did the scallops in a light silver blue metallic and pinstripe one side of the scallops in white and the other side in black. Twomley had his Chevy repainted in a brighter metallic blue.
Then I re it in white pearl with powder blue pearl tips and pinstriped them in imitation gold. This is the only color shot I have of Twomley's Custom. Again, Jim Potter is on my roof, catching me with a fake shot over the hood of Al Lazarus 55 Chevy, with Elaine Sterling watching, and Calvin Weekamp's 55 Merc to the right. I named Calvin's Merc the Snake Wagon. This 49 Chevy fleet line belonged to Harold Johnson from Long Beach. It was featured here in Carcraft November of 54 when Dick Ward owned it. Dick did all the custom body work on his Chevy and painted it ivory white nitro lacquer. Dick owned a shop called Dick's Body Shop of Long Beach. and featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 55. It was also featured in Carcraft April of 54, displaying his taillights that he molded into his bumper guards. Here's a shot of Harold and his Chevy after he bought it from Dick Ward, featured in Carcraft February of 59 for Car Club of the Year. Harold was also a member of the Renegades Car Club from Long Beach. Harold repainted the Chevy in a mother of pearl nitro lacquer. I did the scallops in candy green tipped in candy root beer using his pearl for my underbase. Then I pinstriped them in black. Photos by yours truly. At the time, this 29 roaster with the track nose belonged to Delmer Brink from Bellflower, also another high school classmate of mine. It was featured here in Rodden Custom August of 90, showing the roaster when it won the first trophy at the Oakland Roadster Show in 1950 for America's Most Beautiful Roadster. Bill Niekamp owned it at that time. I believe Delmer Brink bought it from Niekamp and then he brought the roaster over to my Bellflower Boulevard shop in 58 and I painted it candy grape over platinum pearl. I know this roaster was featured in several magazines back in the early 50s which I don't have in my collection. In 59, Delmer brought his roaster over to my Bellflower shop on the corner of Lakewood Boulevard and Rosecrans for another paint job. This time I did a fadeaway on his roaster. I started at the track nose with a very deep candy apple root beer and gradually fading the color all the way to the rear into its rich gold powder underbase. It was featured here on the cover of Rodden Custom February of 71 of America's Most Beautiful Roadster, 1950. Jim Jacobs wound up with the roaster in 70. He's featured here on the cover with his dad starting the reconstruction. Yes, Jake restored it back to the original condition when it was in blue. This was Daryl Jorgensen's 57 Corvette from Southgate. Daryl did his own fiberglass work and he painted his vet in a candy apple red. In 57 I flamed it in the same color he used for the underbase which was a pale gold powder. Then I pinstriped them in white.
These photos were featured in Car Speed and Style, June of 58. It was also another custom featured in the Grease Machines book, April of 79. Featured here in Carcraft, January of 59. You can see Daryl did some more body work and repainted it in the same candy apple red again. And I duplicated the flames in 58. We started a new trend in 57. We do the face panels on our dashboard in the glitter and the hubcats behind the flipper bars. Daryl's dash was featured here in Custom Cars, January of 60. Daryl's vet was also featured here in Carcraft, February of 59 for Car Club of the Year. Yes, Daryl was a member of the Renegades. I forgot about Gerald Twomley and his Chevy were also featured in Carcraft, February 59 for Car Club of the Year. This 56 Merc belonged to Jack Arnold from Norwalk. George Branson from Artesia did all the custom body and paint work. Jack's Merc was first featured here in Car Speed and Style, June of 58, for an article called Scalloping, the newest craze in custom painting by Jim Potter, using his East Coast name, James Richards. It was featured here in Car Speed and Style, April of 58, for another article called How to Mix Your Own Personal Paint Color. I did the scallops in a Tahitian red metallic tipped in rich gold powder and pinstriped them in black. It was featured here on the rear cover of Grease Machine's book, April of 79. As you can see his car plaque, Jack was a member of the Coachman's Car Club of Norwalk. I horse traded Jack's scallop job for a set of Appleton teardrop spotlights for my Chevy. All the photos of Jack's Merc were taken by Jim Potter. This was Dick Jackson's 50 Merc from Linwood. Gil Ayala from East LA did the majority of body work. Then it was taken over to the Barris Brothers to have 55 Plymouth taillights installed. They changed the side molding and painted it in a deep purple. It was featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 57. Also featured here in Carcraft, July of 57. and here in Custom Cars, September of 57. It was featured here in Rodden Custom, August of 58. It made the cover of Rotting and Restyling, February of 58. Here's Dick Jackson and the Merc featured in Custom Cars Annual of 58 after he scalloped it. Dick had his own custom body and paint shop in Compton. Featured here in Popular Customs, August, September of 66, the Merc was also featured in the Barris Customs of the 50s book. This was Dick's 57 Ford. He built, painted, and scalloped. It was featured here on the cover of Custom Cars Annual of 58. In 57, he traded his custom Ford for the Buddy Alcorn Merc. This cover shot was taken by Jim Potter.
This 34 chop Chrysler powered coupe belongs to Jim Griesma from Bellflower. Yes, he still owns it. It was not only featured here on the cover of the Hot Rod December of 56, but it was featured in the number one TV show, The Life of Riley. As you can see, the star of the series, William Bendix, posing alongside with a kid who played Junior. Jim was a neighbor in the same area. I always knew it was him cruising past a house without looking up from my pinstriping work. He had the greatest sound system ever, with the loping from the cam through his 18-inch steel pack mufflers. Jim was the greatest mechanic around. After he would get through milking his cows, there would be cars in his driveway waiting for mechanical work. Jim had the most immaculate setup for his type of work. Look at the wall behind him, how neatly the tools are mounted. And Jim always kept the floors mopped. His cows never had it this good. It also made the cover of Rod and Custom, August of 58. And featured here in the Barris Customs of the 50s book. George Barris flamed the fenders and Dean Jeffries pinstriped it. This 57 Buick belonged to Jack James from Norwalk. His Buick also made the cover of Motor Trend, February of 58. They featured me inside posing with my Develva spray gun and freshly cut flat top with my group around me. It was featured here in Popular Customs, fall issue of 63. Jack's Buick was another custom that made the cover of Grease Machines, April of 79. I did the flames in yellow faded into orange with red tips and pinstriped them in white. Jack had Simpsons Buick from Downey sponsor him on his car. and made the cover of this Sweden magazine, April of 60. Here's a shot of me laying out the flames with half inch masking tape and my brother Dave filling them in with wider tape and Calvin Weekamp is in the foreground taking a break from wet sand in these flames. All the photos of Jack's Buick were taken by Jim Potter This was Louis Goldrap's 54 Chevy two-door sedan from Lakewood. George Branson's custom shop in Artesia did the bodywork and painted it in a lime metallic nitro lacquer and Von Dutch pinstriped it in a mint white. It was featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56.
Louis and his custom made the cover of Carcraft, May of 57. When Louis drove back from Hollywood after having Von Dutch pinstripe his Chevy, he cruised into the clock drive-in that Saturday evening. I got out on my Chevy and walked over to Louis's car and got on my knees to check out Dutch's striping. His lines were straight as an arrow and his design work was very even. I told Louis the next time he visits Dutch to tell him the kid says he's still the master. This full custom 50 Chevy without its Carson top belonged to St. Vasquez from Bellflower. Ed Shellhouse did the bodywork and his painter George Newton painted it in a Tahitian red metallic nitro lacquer. I pinstriped it in imitation gold. It was also featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56. Here's Saint and his girlfriend Connie at the time with his custom featured here on the cover of Carcraft. May of 57. The same Saturday that Louis took his Chevy to Von Dutch to have him pinstripe it, Saint had me pinstripe his Chevy. It was in 56. It was featured here in Carcraft, October of 57. And Rodden Custom. July of 57 for an article on grills. Also featured here in Custom Cars, November of 57 for an article on bumpers. And Custom Cars again, January of 58 for one of the 10 best customs. And it was featured here in Motor Life, July of 58. This photo was taken up at Griffith Park, Hollywood Hills. Saint brought it back to have more pinstriping added. Saint was also a member of the Renegades. Here's a group shot of all the members from the Renegades Car Club with their trophies, featured here in Carcraft, February of 59. In 58, Saint was the president of the Renegades. Here's Saint on the left receiving the award for Car Club of the Year from Dick Day, the editor of Carcraft. It was featured here in Custom Cars, June of 58, reminding one of the Bay Area enthusiasts of the LA freeways. This is the most radical scallop job I did in 57. This shot was taken at the Long Beach Auditorium in 58. It was also featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 59. I want to thank Greg Sharp for these photographs. Here's a shot of us taping it up. I'm at the left, Gary McNaught's in the center, and Eddie Rhodes on the right. I painted the scallops in a gold metallic and pinstriped them in white. Here's a shot of me pinstriping the scallops. As you can see, Saint's hubcaps have the glitter behind the flipper bars. This photo was taken by Jim Potter. Here we have the moon glow. This 54 full custom Chevy belonged to Dwayne Steck from Bellflower. Dwayne did all the custom bodywork with the support from his friend Ben Cook. It was featured here in Restyle Your Car of 56.
The Moon Glow made the cover of Carcraft, January of 57. Dwayne had a friend who painted for Earl Shive. After Dwayne prepped his car, he took it across the street to Shive's after closing hours, and his buddy sprayed it in a white synthetic enamel. Then I pinstriped it in light blue. This is the Moon Glow album that Dwayne had me pinstripe in 56. Twenty years later, Dwayne gave it to me at my Hollywood shop. These two photographs were used on the backside cover of Custom Cars, November of 57. A year later, the Moon Glow made the cover again. Custom Cars, January of 58. They featured it as one of the 10 best customs. This great shot of his 56 Chrysler taillight was featured here in Carcraft, April of 58. Dwayne was a great artist. When he drove his Moon Glow into our driveway in 56, he asked me if I could pinstripe over his nude ladies he sketched on his hood, trunk, and quarter panels and pinstripe around them. Well, as you can see, I want to thank Greg Sharp for these photographs. Dwayne used to take me cruising in the moon glow with him. This shot was featured in Rod and Custom, August of 58. It was featured here in Motor Life, February of 58. Dwayne and his Moon Glow were also featured in Carcraft February of 59 for Car Club of the Year. Yes, Dwayne was a member of the Renegades. I want to thank Greg Sharp for these photographs. Coming up is the third version of the Moon Glow. In 57, Dwayne and Daryl Jorgensen prepped and repainted the Moon Glow in a bright silver metallic nitro lacquer. I did the scallops in white pearl tipped in candy blue and pinstriped them in blue. The photograph was taken by Low Helms. Here's another aerial shot taken in 57 at my North Long Beach shop. This photo was also taken by Low Helms. Here's the fourth version of the Moon Glow. As you can see, Dwayne did more bodywork to it. He brought it over to my 59 shop and I painted a candy blue over the brightest blinding silver pearl. It was my best candy blue. It made the cover for the third time, Custom Cars, March of 60. Pat Ganahl borrowed the Moon Glow album, and Greg Sharp did the Moon Glow story for Rodden Custom, June of 91. This was my 50 Chevy that we customized during my junior year in high school. This is the second version known as the Grapevine. Jay Johnson did the extra bodywork and Damon Ritchie from Long Beach painted it in a deep grape metallic two-toned in lavender nitro lacquer. It was first featured here on the cover of Hot Rod September of 57 for an article on Lower Your Car the Right Way.
and it was featured inside when it was in its first version, known as the Heartless. This photo on the cover was taken at Forest Lawn in Hollywood Hills by Bob D'Olivo. It also made the cover of Custom Cars, December of 57. Al Pelosi did the article. And all the photos were taken by Bob D'Olivo. These photos by Bob were also featured here in Custom Cars, November of 57. And featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 58, photos and article by Jim Potter. Jim shot this photo in 57 at the Compton Car Show. And featured here in Custom Rodder, November of 59, also by Jim Potter, using his East Coast name, James Richards. It was featured here in Custom Cars Annual of 59. Again, it made the cover of Custom Cars, August of 58. It was also featured on the cover of Custom Cars Annual of 59, along with my T-Bird. This time I painted my Chevy in a rose mist metallic nitro lacquer. I did the scallops in silver metallic and pinstriped them in black. I also removed the rear skirts and added more flipper blades to my hubcaps and installed Appleton teardrop spotlights and painted heart-shaped scallops on them. This was the third version and last. These photos were taken by Jim Potter and I want to thank Greg Sharp for the fresh prints. This shot was taken at Griffith Park in Hollywood Hills January of 58 by Jim Potter. It was the last day with my Chevy. From there it went to Oregon. This is another shot that Jim Potter taken at Griffiths Park. This shot was taken by Jim Potter at the Los Altos Shopping Center in Long Beach. This will be one of the photos used for the cover of my Volume 1 book. It also made the rear cover of the Grease Machines book, April of 79. And featured inside with Jim Potter's photographs. It was also featured in Peterson Deluxe Series. Creative Customizing. And it was featured here in Hot Rod, July of 89, for an article called Dare to be Different by Greg Sharp. This was another photo taken by Bob DeLivo at Forest Lawn in Hollywood Hills. I want to thank Pete and Jake for using this photo of the grapevine in their book. And I want to thank Jerry Reisner for using part of Steve Stanford's artwork for his article in Custom Rotter, summer issue of 93. And I want to thank Dave Bell for keeping the grapevine alive with his great artwork on the rear pages of Custom Rotter. It made the cover of Rodden Custom June of 96 for the sixth time. 
How's that for the Grapevine's 40th anniversary? I want to thank Jeff Tan, the editor of Rod and Custom, and special thanks to Tom Taylor for doing the two articles on me and my crazy days with the sword striping brushes and spray guns. I want to thank all of you out there for viewing this tape and reminiscing with me from the golden age of custom cars and hot rods. I want to thank you again.